this month we are talking about finances we're talking about finances you know just because of the way the lord has brought me up i'm always very challenged because especially if you live in africa you understand that one of the biggest challenge that we deal with as a continent is the issue of finances so in my growing up you know in the church i've really expected that there will be a lot of spiritual intelligence and revelation that will bring people out of that place of spiritual tightness the truth is that there has been some and we're grateful to that but when i look at the generality of the things i spoken about finances it's just a lot about asking people to give which is great but i really think it's not complete the reason why is this i do not believe that giving alone can deliver you from financial hardship I believe that giving with doing other things will bring about those kind of testimonies. And in this teaching today and this month, we will be exploring the word of God as regarding finances and challenging ourselves and stretching ourselves as regarding all that God wants us to do. So my, 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 my prayer is that, and in this season, you don't have to be careful because there's going to be adjustment in thinking, adjustment in in habit adjustment in behavior there's going to be different kind of adjustment so great meetings are great but destinies are changed by great decisions meetings are great but destinies are changed by great decisions so it's not just what you hear that will change you it's a decision based on what what you hear that will change you all right so let's look in the bible first kings second kings chapter four and i'm going to start from verse one second kings chapter four and i'm going to start from verse one so the bible says this and they cried a certain woman of the wives of the prophet the sons of the prophet unto elisha saying thy servant my husband so this person is talking about is was also a prophet he said, thy servant, my husband, is dead. We don't know if it was a financial problem that killed him. He said, thy servant, thy husband, is dead. And thou knowest, and this is what the woman was saying. I want to understand what she was saying. He says, thou knowest that my husband did fear the Lord. But the creditors are come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. What he was really saying is this. He said, excuse me, Elijah. He said, you know of a truth. That when they say son is genuinely born again, that my husband is one. You know the truth when they say son is a genuine man of God, my husband is one. He said, how we got into a particular financial mess that all of a sudden our children will be taken because we don't have money is where we have found ourselves. And the first thing I want to explain and establish is this. That though you are spiritual and you know how to pray, does not mean that you understand or will walk in financial abundance except you particularly understood it or understand it rather you know because for this person and and i want to see it the same way there are principles that got, that govern supernatural operations the same way there are principles that govern healing there are principles from the word of god that pros that governs doing well in life and it's not just prayer it has to do with things more than prayer so this woman from the tone of a conversation you could tell that she was really disappointed because she told elijah he said you know personally this guy you know that this guy was a good guy he said how we got ourselves into the state where we became people that will borrow until we eventually use our kids as collateral he said that i don't understand and he said man of god i'm stuck it's either i pay back or they take my children and let me say something quickly is it possible to be a christian and poor yes and if you read the bible the bible is full of examples why people have those challenges why people have those challenges? As a matter of fact, let me tell you the truth. I never said the more you're a Christian, the more religious you are, the likely you're going to be poor. Because there's something about religious and poverty that makes them work together. I never said the more you're a Christian. So you must make sure you're a Christian, but you're not religious. Glory to God. So let me show you something quickly. Let's just look. This is, not, this is our, let's look at 
Luke chapter 16. And I'm going to explain why this woman was poor and what she had to do to come out of it. Because we're talking about dealing with financial tightness. And as I speak about this, it could talk about personal tightness, but it also could talk about companies. So next week, I think I'm talking about how, to, how God will provide capital for business funding and all of those things. And I'm also going to talk about how to cultivate an investment mentality. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I love our church. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, I think it's the best church in the world. I tell you. You know, I look back, I'm like, if I was taught this when I was a younger Christian, my life would be a little better. I'm not, I'll be way ahead. You know, but that's how it is. You grow up, you see the loops holes there, and you're like, because I'm telling you, when I got born again, there were two answers to financial problems. You pray, pray and fasting, and giving. If it doesn't happen, goodbye. You know, <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that is not incorrect, it is incomplete. Okay, so let's see why Christ, well, let's see why people are poor. We'll see why this sentence, but let's see one of one of that story is very glaring. Look chapter 16, verse 19. I'm gonna come back to the story. Just just something that distracted me a little. Because this is the expert scripture, people say Christians should not be rich because it is the Bible of the rich man and Lazarus. The Bible says in verse 19, and there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared what? sumptuously every day and there was a certain beggar named what lazarus which was laid at the gate of what at his gate full of what question who died and went to heaven you know the story who who died and went to hell so the question is this if lazarus knew how to get to heaven how come he didn't know how to prosper that's the question so, someone says, you know, maybe God did not bless him that way. Maybe God did not choose he will be rich. Have you ever heard this thing before? That God did not destine you to be rich. I say, the way I know my father, he is good and kind to me. If you want to destine one person to be rich, I'm the one. Because I know he is good and kind to me. Someone says, you didn't choose it. Uh, I say, I know myself. There's no way I will see hard life and easy life. And choose hard life. When I'm not under manipulation. Is that not true? So the question is that, why did Lazarus become poor? I want to show you from the Bible. Not for myself from the Bible. Look at the next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. What does the Bible say? And Lazarus desiring what? So we fed with what? That what? Did you notice Lazarus' desire was to be fed with crumbs? And the Bible says the expectation of what? Of the righteous shall not be cut short. So, if his expectation was to be fed with crumbs, what did he get? Crumbs. He didn't change the fact that Lazarus was praying for breakthrough. His mindset, his mentality, his expectation was to be fed with crumbs. As someone says, ah, that's not me. I, I don't have that kind of expectation. Question. Listen, I know people that pray for finances. When you talk to them, the expectation is so small. So small. He says, look at Lazarus. You see, except God told us this. This was something you can never see on the outside. The Bible says, Lazarus said, I don't want hard life. I don't want to be an entrepreneur. As far as I can be eating crumbs that fall from the rich man's table. He said, I'm okay. And the law of the spirit says, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Before you point out at Lazarus, What's your own desire? At least Lazarus' desire. Most Christians here don't have any specific goal concerning their finances. Because, they, and that's the thing. Let me tell you something. And the reason people don't have specific goals about their finances is this. There's that fear that if it doesn't happen, what do I do? You are like Lazarus. There's that fear. That if this does not happen, what would I do? I met a guy, he's in his early 30s, and we're just discussing about his finances. And he said, when I was in College of Education, and if you know the Nigerian system very well, College of Education is where you go to where you can't get to university. You know what I'm saying? You know, because the, first, the primary place is further universities. Then you go to, I mean, in the olden days, there were no private universities, you know. So, you know, now there's private universities, federal universities, state universities, then 
polytechnics, then what college of education is like the last on the ladder. So this guy was in a college of education. That was how bad he was. And he said from there, I made up my mind that when I'm 40, I will have assets worth 3 billion. You must imagine how poor he was to say so. From where he was, I will have assets worth 3 billion so that I'll retire. If I can just get 8% annual returns on my 3 billion, I'll be making a year 240 million. I can live with that in a year. And that was it. You know what I'm saying? So you are here right now. What is your financial desire for this year when you are 50, when you are 70? Nothing. And the Bible says the expectation of the righteous shall be met. Because people are quick to point and Lazarus and say that, how can he have that? But what is your own? Your own is zero. In fact, when you pray your prayers, the Father bless me, bless me. See, most Christians are reactive when it comes to finance. They pray when they need money. That's not how your child runs. You should be strategic when it comes to finance. And say, Lord, my prayer is that I'm going to hit the first 100 million. I'm going to hit the first 200. That, that's my prayer when it comes to finances. So, most Christians become very, very focused when it comes to finances when they have need. So the question today is, where is the goal? Where is the goal? What is your financial goal this year? And the few of us that make goals, and you know, I had to be taught this, the few of us that have financial goals, our financial goals is how much we will earn or make. And the truth is that when it comes to real wealth, wealthy people don't place their financial goals on how much they will earn. They place their financial goal on how much they are worth. You know why? Whatever you earn or make is an opportunity to be rich. You can lose it. Whatever you're worth shows exactly how much you are. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, that's so. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. I mean, look at that. The Bible says we're just desiring to be real. So, so some of you are here, you know, really in your heart, you just, and, and let me tell you something. You know, some, some people sometimes... When ladies want to be honest with you, even some guys do it. They say, I'm just looking for a rich, I'm just looking for a girl from a rich family. When you say you're looking for a girl from a rich family, or let's say, I just want a guy that is rich that can take care of me. Do you really think wealth is sexually transmitted? Wealth is not sexually transmitted. If you marry a rich person, that doesn't make you a rich woman, a rich man. All you do is you, you are married to someone and it gives you access to wealth. If something happens in that relationship, you'll go back to where you came from. Because wealth is not sexually transmitted. Wealth is not sexually, let me say, wealth is not sexually transmitted. Sometimes, you see these two guys, they were in school together, they meet after seven years, and the guy is asking the girl, or oh, really like the girl, and the, and the girl will be like, by the way, tell me, what, what are you doing now? Tell me. Have you bought a house? Tell me. Have you bought a car? Tell me. Have you done this or not? I want to, excuse me, you went to school together, Abby. What happened to your own head? What happened to your own head? Because you guys were classmates. Now, you, it's almost as if you expect him to make all the progress and you know progress. And that kind of thinking is what limits either the men or the women in that category. Glory to God. So let's go back to 2 Kings chapter, chapter 4. So we see that one of the things that affected Lazarus here was his mindset, was his expectation, the way he thought about it. 2 Kings chapter 4. And how do you change your expectation? Change your friends. Your friend raised the, your friends, the association around you determines the standard for your life. Let me give an example. If you see, um, let me get to you from the choir. You know, maybe, 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 yeah. Maybe, maybe the two ladies, yeah, just come. Any of the ladies come from the choir. You don't know them before. You just see two beautiful ladies here and they're talking. And they say, give me 10 now. And they say, give me 5 now. I say, give me 10. I say, give me 5. Give me 10. Give me 10. How much do you think they're talking about? Talk to me now. Eh? No, how much will you think they're talking about? Okay, let me ask someone in the choir that knows them. You know. <laughs> yes, how much will you think? Um, yes. Just be honest. Don't, don't play games now. Just be honest. 
Uh, yes, he said, I know, he, he said, <laughs> someone said, Pastor, it's 10K they are talking about. Don't let us say, ask it. He said, it's 10K, 20K they are talking about. And the reason why is that with this kind of relationship, maybe that's where they are. But let me just place them in your mind. If this was Dan Gotti and this was a toddler, wow. and they were saying, give me two, give me five, give me two, give me five. What would you think they're talking about? <laughs> what? So what? Can you see why we want added dollars to it? Because in that conversation, Naira is not significant. Your relationship raises your standard or reduces your standard. That's what I'm going to. So, just your relationship raises your standard. Same conversation, but because the people change. You know, in this relationship, they don't, when they talk, it's billions of dollars. Millions of dollars they are talking about. Are you amongst people when you talk about 100 million? They say, hey! 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 Are you amongst people that say 100 million? That's good. Because, you know, the other day I was spoken of, the, he did it 250. I'm like, oh wow. How do you change your mind quickly? Change your association. All of you that smoked or drank here, how did you smoke? Someone encouraged you. Is that not true? <laughs> people are just being honest. Leave them. Leave them. People are just being honest. The, the first time you drank, were, were, were there people there? No, talk to me. Were there people there? Exactly. First time you smoke, were there people there? First time you did shisha, were there people there? Don't say shisha is sin. Read the Bible. Thanks. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we're going back to, the, to, the, to, to our scripture. So 2 Kings chapter 4. This is good. So the Bible says this. The Bible says this, that the woman said, Thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take. See, this people, and, and let me just begin to talk about this. Why is it important for you to deal with, with financial troubles, difficulty, or tightness on time. The first reason is this, because it gets worse with time. That's the truth. Financial problems are like cancer. If you don't treat them on time, they get worse with time. Just imagine these people, because of their financial problems, now they're taking their children. In my personal opinion, I don't think that the first collateral was their children. I think the first collateral was something else. But as they lost the collateral, it came to their children. There's something about finances. If you don't fix it right now, it will get worse. It will get worse. Some of you are here right now. Every month, you always need financial help to get along. If you don't fix it as you grow older, it gets worse. Some of you, you see in your company, this last year you did 50 million. You know, I'm um, sorry, three years ago you did 50 million. Two years ago you did 30 million. Last year you did 50 million. If you don't fix it, it will keep draining out. And most people only pay attention to their finances when it is really bad and it's very critical. And that is the state where it's difficult to fix. There was a lady, I heard a story. Very, you know, as a pastor, you hear some stories and you just had broken. A mother was really sick. She had always had financial challenges and would just pass by but never paid attention to it. But her mother was really sick and she needed money to either was drugs or operation. And the only person that could help was this guy that had said that it would only help if he slept with her. And they eventually had sex and that night she got pregnant and had HIV. Someone says, oh wow, but a financial problem did not start the day that happened. It started before. You will notice every time there's house rent, you have a trouble. Every, there's always some of you. You always some of you are in loads and loads of debt right now. All this call company are calling your friends and sending them text messages. Are, Do you know Anita Oze? Don't pick her call. She's a criminal. She has this. She borrows money anyhow. And you're just and you change numbers, but you're not fixing the financial problems. So the reason I'm saying this to you is that you have to fix. Either the flesh as a company or as an individual as soon as possible. Look at the amount of debt you have. 
look at this person. How do you get to a point in your life where you have no other collateral than your children? Can you believe that? That means that they have been selling things. They have been giving things away. The only thing that remains right now are kids. The second reason why you must fix your financial problems urgently is this. Financial tightness reduces your quality of life. There are people that have died not because God called them home. They couldn't get financial treatment based on money. It reduces your quality of life. You want to go here? You can go. You want to do that? You can do. Some people cannot even eat what they want to eat just because of finances. And I'm saying so because your financial problems will not go away by you ignoring them. If your company has financial problems, it will not go away by you ignoring them. I know you're praying about it, but that will not be enough. The third reason why you must fix your finances is this. Poor finance will affect your marriage or relationship. Just in case you don't know, the number one cause of divorce globally is what? Money. Just in case you don't know, the number one cause of, of, of divorce globally is what? Money. People don't even divorce because they are not believing the same thing. They don't even divorce because of Christianity. They divorce because of what? Money. I know people that are married to you they don't love because of money. I know people, I, I mean, I'm not sure if it was a video I watched or it was a real life story. There was a lady that was saying something like, you know, um, she was in a marriage. She had a child before she married this man. And the man she married sleeps with her daughter that she had for the other man. And she couldn't do anything when the daughter came to report to her. He told the daughter, shut up. He said, I know it's evil, but if you talk, it will throw us back on the streets. It's, it's better we suffer in a good house. Than to be suffering on the street and have people laugh at us. Can you see what money does? Money is what makes people leave Christianity and do all sorts. And that's why you must fix it. And you must fix it. And that's why if you run a company, if you run a company, as someone that runs a company, you must pay huge attention to the finance of your organization. Either it's a ministry or it's a company. May money not take away your voice. May lack of money not take away your voice. I'm telling you, there are families where the wife or husband is not happy but needs to stay there because of the lack of money. When you talk Christian, that are you moving to Canada? Have you prayed? You say, Pastor, they need to pray. Because when there's a lack of money, even God's voice to you becomes subjective. Glory to God. So, so, let's keep going. So, why was this man in financial trouble? From just what you can see. The first reason why people experience financial tightness is a lack of financial education. You can tell, nobody takes a loan and uses his children for collateral if they have any kind of intelligence. Yes or no? How do you? I'm saying so because many of you are saying yes, but you are taking all these new loans they are doing online that you are paying 40% backward. Is there something wrong with your mind? This I just want to quickly borrow. They say quickly borrow, quickly borrow, quickly borrow. You borrow 30%, then you'll be paying 25% every month. 25% every month. Just financial education. You know why this is passionate to me? Because my mom made this mistake. My mom used to run a very large um, departmental store for, for what they call it, for Unilever. And had about 100 employees. And what they do those days, when money was money, just when, I mean, this is in the 80s or early 90s. Their quarter, I think their quarter, their, their quarter, per quarter was about 1 billion. Either 1 or 800 million, something like that. But the thing is, is that if you do 200 million, they give you 5% profit. If you do commission, they give you those. So when you get like 1 billion, they give you like a large thing. And my mom wanted to really get onto one billion. She was doing about maybe every quarter 600, 800. She, wanted to get she went to this finance and took a loan. And the goal was that when she gets the profit, she will pay back. And she didn't only do it. A lot of her friends that were doing that business, that was what they did. And it, big, it backfired. And what saved my mom was this, that my mom had real estate. And she just had to began, she began to sell one after the other. One of our friends that's close to me recently called me. I said, the only house I want is that the bank wants to take it. He said, is there anything you can do? 
See, if you're financially intelligent, there are some things you don't do. How do you take a loan that charges you? Let me tell you something. As simple as 10% every month. Do you know 10% every month in a year is 120%? That means if I loan 100,000, by the end of the year, I will have paid 220,000 in interest and, and capital. What kind of business will you do that will give you 120,000, 120% in a year? Financially, it's just looking at the figures, looking at the figures, looking at the figures, very powerful. And I'm saying so because the reason people get into trouble is that they're not looking at the figures. They just say, hey, how much like how much like pick up every month? Ah, just thank you, Abby. I can afford that. You must know something. What made you borrow right now? Something will happen again in three months' time that you need to borrow again. He said, I'm borrowing to pay house rent. Why are you looking for a house you need debt to use to pay? Is the house housing you or you are housing the house? Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So, so the major reason why people get into trouble, the same thing. Some of you run companies here. Your staff overhead is too much. You have too much staff and they're doing nothing. You just be signing it. Eh, director strip. Then you just say, eh, sign, send it. Eh. Director, your girlfriend come, sign it. Director strip, director strip, director strip, director strip. You will eat all the thing into red. It's ah, my, my, my friend that's staying in a, which hotel? When we travel, they stay in Sharatin. We have to stay in Sharatin. Do you have the financial capacity of your friends? Financial education. Because some of you run companies, you say, some of you run companies, what's your salary? Everything is my salary. After every deal, let's just buy land cruiser. You don't even have salary, you don't have anything. See, if you run an organization, what is you, your company is different, you are different. And create it that way. And that's what happens to most businessmen. They don't know when they will eat into their capital. And, they will, and it doesn't show because the capital will not say, you've eaten into me or no. Because of turnover, you don't know you've eaten into your capital. You see me seeing big turnovers. There are many of you that sell things here. What is someone saying, Pastor, when I sell things, I always enter loss. It's not demon. No. You don't know your cost price. Because you say, eh, I bought it for 100,000 um, 100, from Dubai. I got to Nigeria, sold it for 150. He said, my profit is 50,000 naira. Your profit is not 50,000 naira. The ticket cost, where is it now 100,000? The hotel you stayed, where is it now 100,000? Your own salary, where is it now 100,000? The Uber that picked it, where is it in the 100,000? Those are costs. So what in cost, they are different. And that's why if you run a business, you must do one course on finance. There's a course called finance for, for non-finance people. Just to have, understand. So what most of you call cost is the unit, is the, is the selling price, is the cost price. But after cost price, there's also overhead. There's also fixed costs. So I bought the property for 100000 But the rent of our office, where we sell it, that cost must enter. The Uber that picked it, that cost must what? Enter. So you don't accuse demons of what they're not doing. Praise God. Is it something that's always leaking my finance? It's not something that's leaking your finance. It's just bad pricing. Now, this one has gone up as your cost not gone up. If your cost is based on power, your cost goes up because this one has gone up. So you need to begin to examine because you can be selling the product at a loss. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, let's take three things and we'll close. So the first thing is this, financial education. What are some key questions you want to ask? The two of you should come again. Key question you want to ask is this. So when it comes to financial education, this is where you start from. Where do you start from? Come quickly, Ben. Over there. Over here. Where is it? Quickly, sir. 
So the first thing you want to ask yourself is this. Where am I going financially? Where's our company going? That's our future. At this year, where are we going financially? In, in for, when I'm 80, where am I going financially? The question is, well, you know where you're going. The question is, where am I? What? Where am I? You know why? If you know where you're going, but you don't know where you are, you can't plot the graph. That's why Google Map will always say, enter your location. Then when you know where you're going and where you are, next thing, what vehicle will take me there? What vehicle will take me there? Because not all vehicles can get to certain destination. If you are going to Lagos to Ibadan now, you can, you can use a car, but you can't ride a bicycle. Because a bicycle cannot use that journey. But if I'm going to London, I can't use a car. I must use a plane. So your destination determines your vehicle. Your destination determines your vehicle. This one that you are selling weak, can that weak turn into someone that can pay school fees in dollars? Sometimes I said I sell new products. Can that turn you to that thing? I mean, that can be a startup plan, but can that plan carry you? You have to sit down and say, Hey, my children are going to go to school in London. Can this vehicle take them to London? Because the problem is that many of us are using the wrong vehicle to get to your destination. You will not be praying, Father, bless this vehicle. You see, you don't say, Father, bless the vehicle. Father, give me the vehicle that will take me there. Open my mind. Let me have a vehicle that will take me there. The vehicle Elisha had was Raven bringing food. That was his vehicle. He was bringing food. When he got to an extent that the water dried up, he changed. The vehicle was the widow at what? Zarephath. Do you know your vehicle? And you must know, some vehicle, you will use it up to an extent and they will die. When you see a vehicle has died, you bury it. Some of you don't know when, when it's time to exit a business. You exit. Why? The vehicle has what? Died. It's easier to give birth to a new child than to resurrect a dead baby. Did you get that? It's easier to give birth to a new child than to what? Resurrect what? A dead baby. The vehicle has died. By the face of time and life you are in, some things will just die naturally. Don't put energy there. Just bury it. And what I'm telling you how you pray for finances. That God will not give you vehicle. At some stage of Elijah's life, it was the brook and bed that fed him. At another stage, what happened? It was the widow of Zarephath that fed him. The challenge with Christians is this. Once God shows you brook, you will stay there. Rahila, oh yeah. And God says, we have moved. Move. He said, I'm not moving father. I'm here. I'm not moving father. I'm here. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Does something come to mind right now? Yeah. Does something come to mind right now? Yeah. Stop flogging a dead horse. The horse is dead. Glory to God. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. The second thing is this. So what is the first cause of financial problems? The lack of financial intelligence. And I love the way that uh, Mike Murdoch said it. He said, if you are serious about your finances, you should read the number of books that is the same number of your age. So if you are 35 years old, you read 35 books of finances. Because the reason why I'm saying is that there's no way in this world they teach you about money. Is it not true? And let me tell you something, all of you online, this might sound racist, but pay attention to me. If you are a black person, you are disadvantaged when it comes to finance. And the reason why is this. Most of the white homes that I'm familiar with, from when the child is young, he sees the house budget on the fridge. White families, most of them are family. He sees the, the house budget on the fridge. Without him going to school, he knows what budgeting is. He knows that this is for this. But we, what do we live when we are young? Relatives come to beg our parents for money. So in our mind, begging, and you know, so we grow up and say, it didn't help me. It's a mode of entitlement. Someone was going to work. He said, I know my uncles will help. I said, what kind of thing is that? Glory to God. Because it's modeling. It's financial modeling. So if they didn't train us, let's train ourselves. You, how can you run a business and not know what a budget is? <laughs> Just imagine. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Toby. God bless you. The second reason why people have financial tightness is this. So the first one is the fact that the lack of financial education. The second one people have financial tightness is this. Because of financial indiscipline. Someone say financial indiscipline. Oh, that's good. Let's read Proverbs chapter 21 verse 20. The New Living Translation. Financial indiscipline. So all this is I'm saying right now. I'm sure this is not the first time you're hearing it. But like I said, it's not hearing that changes someone. It's what? Doing that changes someone. Let's read together. Are you ready? I want to give you a revelation you have never heard before. And you will tell me if I've never heard it. Want to go? The wise have wealth and luxury, but the foolish what? My God, my God. He says, if you have no saving, God says you are foolish. And if God says you are foolish, you are really foolish. He says, the foolish man spends everything. So, no saving. Everybody must have savings. But why don't you have saving? Because of financial what? Indiscipline. Look at it. He said the foolish. It's amazing because I didn't say this. If God says you're foolish, trust me, you are. So today, change. As you are right now, you can't even have a savings of 200000 somewhere. Someone say, I brought all my savings. Uh, 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 uh. Mm, 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 mm. Abba. Ah, you, you, you enjoy your, your money. Me, I deny myself. And I'm not borrowing my savings. Didn't you hear what the five wise virgins told the foolish virgins? They said, come and give us oil. He said, this is our savings. We can't give you. Go and buy. There's budget for benevolence, but not savings. So. The foolish virgin came to the wise virgin. They said, give us oil. They said, we don't, this is what we don't share. What we can share, we have given out. Go and buy your own. And the reason why is that if you give out your savings, when, when you need your savings, you don't have it. Then you become like them, also begging. How do you help? You have a budget for what? Benevolence. That's why if you run a business, there must be the same thing as retain profits. Not everything that is available is spent. Glory to God. And the reason, so I'm, I'm going to begin to close with this. Where are my spoons? Yeah. yeah. And the reason why people don't save, I'll tell you why people don't save, or people don't do what they know financially, because of their indiscipline. And they're indiscipline because they don't understand their financial phase. All of us are in phases. Life, men are in sizes. Life is in phases. So, you know the phase of life, but time. So, let me give you the four financial phases of life. Are you ready? Uh -uh. Are you ready? Someone say, I'm ready. I'm ready. The first phase is the survivor phase. What survivor phase? This is what it looks like. Have a look at it. This survivor phase. In the survivor phase is the phase where your income covers your expenses that your goal is that i have enough to cover my expenses that phase happens to business people happens to individuals this is survival it's a teaspoon phase you cannot share the problem is that you are in survival phase the goal of the survival phase is to make sure i minimize my income to the point that what i earn can cover my expenses that's all and this is where we all start from. The problem is that you will be in survival phase trying to cover up your own personal expenses. Then all of a sudden, your friend is doing wedding and I show me it's only $50,000 and you want to enter. Listen to me. Nobody can share this funeral. You will just bend. Yeah, in survival phase, your friend says, oh, we're going to Cancun for, for you know, just to go and play. we we'll just go, just go and play. You say, ah, let me also come along. See, you don't understand. You, you, and because you can't cover your expenses, you now go and borrow. Can I be really realistic? Yes, what ruins a lot of people is that in this phase, some families are born with financial pressure and burden. There are people they have to carry. The problem is that if you cannot come out of the rat race, you cannot help everybody else. So, the first thing you have to be like, mommy and daddy, just give me one or two years. 
let me come out first. Because if I don't come out, I can't bring you out. Because in this phase, I know people that borrow, not for themselves, they borrow for family members. And that keeps them inside. It's not like in the US. The first thing that an average garden years confronts is college debts. In Africa, it's not college debts. It's family debts. As you just finished school, they say, now that you are finished, <laughs> remember us. Take your brother. I say, mommy, before you say I should take, just give me one year. Let me, let me grow out of this face. Because as if finish means that you have income. Who knows what I'm talking about? What I'm talking about, right? And, and that's why you see people, your friends are able to, to do other things. You cannot even do anything. This phase, your goal is to have enough income to cover your, your expenses. So your expenses must be low enough for your income to cover it. Then you move to the next phase, this survival phase. What's the next phase? Security phase. It's now bigger. In security phase, you now have more than your income. So you start saving. So you start saving. So in this phase, there is saving and there's small to also help other people. Why is saving important? Every other thing you will use to generate money was have you need money. So you want to start a business, you need money. You want to do investment, you need money. So if you, if you are not saving, so if you don't grow from here to here and save, you still cannot help. So here, you have money now, but you, have, you are putting money aside. Why are you putting money aside? Because you want to grow. Because at this stage, you can help, but the help is small. You want to go to the third stage. What's the third stage? Third stage is what success stage. You know success. At this stage, you don't only have savings. Your saving is now yielding other income. So, with the, so you now have multiple sources of income. You cannot help them. So with this one, you can now serve everybody. Say, mommy, bring your plate. I serve you. My brother, bring your plate. I serve you. Ray, bring your plate. I, yo, me, bring your plate. I serve you. I serve you. I serve you. But if you serve with this one, the problem is that many of you want to serve with this one. You want to serve with this one. This is the problem. <laughs> you say, <laughs> someone say, hey, you are like this. You say you have girlfriend. What? What? Do, why are you looking for a problem? <laughs> why are you looking for a problem? How can you be like this? You have girlfriend. <laughs> February fourteen. You know, you're looking for loan. <laughs> yeah. You say, ah, no. I'm, I'm, no wonder you don't tie it again because <laughs> how can you be tight? Your girlfriend is your god, you tie to her. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have a friend recently. He, he told me that he, told, he traveled, so his girlfriend came back. So I said, Oh, have you seen your girlfriend? Because they've been away for like four weeks. He said, ah, he said, oh boy, I've not seen now. I said, Why? He said, Even the Uber money to give her, I don't have. He said, So I've calculated that she come and go now. That Uber is 10K. Then I need to give her like, Thank you for coming and add another maybe 10K or 20K with he said the truth is that i don't have i said then why are you having a good girlfriend how do you see trouble and carry it <laughs> see you need to know your size you are here you are here you are here here yeah, only for your mouth just for uh, just you <laughs> only you praise god one guy told me said, i want to marry i said you are too young he said ah pastor at my age i said you are financially young you are young once you are young financially, you are young. Praise God. You are financially young. Don't say at my age. What's your age? Age that cannot pay house rent. Is that one age? Praise the Lord. Because it, it, it takes time. This is the thing. If you cannot jump the process, you have to go from survival to what? Security. Then to what? Now, if you want to do program in church, we just get a contractor and say, bring the speakers, we pay for the speakers. Come, Ugo. Ugo lives in Texas now. When we started, how were we carrying the speakers? Um, I usually go to... Okay, can you hear me? Um, Please, can I have bring this microphone? So we, we stored um, the equipment... Who, who was paid to carry speakers for us? Um, we... Us now, right? Us! The speaker was on the head! There's no pastor or usher. Everybody carry speak on your head. They, as you just come past it, you take your own. Fojo, take your own. You just carry, pa! You just carry the speaker. That survival stage, you must minimize costs. And this is a church where we're not saying that the Lord shall provide all the needs. We'll just get the job. 
this guy now is an American. He would this, with this beautiful head, he will carry speak his head now. Only God knows how many speakers have been carried on it. We set up the place because we didn't have any. We used to rent. We set up the place, carry speakers there. When we finish, we'll carry the speaker back. Thank you, sir. You at this stage, you are worrying about iPhone 10. You will soon bend. You are worrying about iPhone 10. Is, this, <laughs> is that a need? You are worried about iPhone 10. No wonder you have iPhone 10, you cannot pay house rent. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. You know why I'm telling you this? So that you behave. So when you want to see, you don't understand, there are some levels, some places you can't be eating now. You are here. You are here. The place you need to be just, 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 just give me 10 or 20 or 15 or just that's where you are. Once you pass, because in life you don't jump tests. If you jump up, you come down. If you grow up, you stay up. Praise God. Someone says, you know, when we do an honeymoon, so I saw one guy say, our honeymoon is going to be Mauritius. I said, do you have money? He said, no, we don't have money for that, but we're going to get it. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> I said, Mauritius. I said, me, I'm talking to you. What did I do honeymoon? I, I told my wife, if there's no honeymoon, Ibadan is there. <laughs> what makes the honeymoon is two of us. Is that not true? Because no matter what you are, you will do what you have to do. Yes or no? Yes. Exactly. But praise God, we got some funds and we went to enjoy our honeymoon in the city of Accra. Praise God. As we're going, someone gave us a thousand dollars. We came back with change eight hundred dollars to Nigeria. We came back to Nigeria eight hundred dollars. What are you talking about? Because I knew I was here. But guess what? All the people that refuse to grow ultimately come back here. Those that are patient will go like this, go like this, and come here. Praise God. Yeah, so remember when your friend calls you for something where you are. Just, just take the spoon and remember and say, hey. <laughs> Why are you eating the spoon? He said, I know what I'm telling myself. <laughs> I know what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, some of you earn salary of 150,000 and you go to a place at a city, you eat 50,000. You have eaten your destiny. Like there's no, uh, no, 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 you've eaten your destiny. Ah, 150,000 in a city. You can't be paying tight. How can you pay tight? No, 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 you can't pay tight. How can you pay tight? Some of you are here, you say, I'm, you know, Pastor, I just want money for my business, money for my funding. The weave on your hair is 500,000. Is that not in that capital? What are you looking for? Just remove it. What's the head doing on your head? What are you doing with capital on your head? It should be growing. Praise God. You know, our, our, you know, our community loves, let's everybody do it together. Please, don't be impoverished by communal poverty. Make, know your size. Do what is your size. Yes, just remember, I don't know where you are. Are you here? Or you are here? Or you are here? So when one says, do me this, I say, I'm a teaspoon, oh, I'm a go. <laughs> That's my level, oh. Don't come and kill me. But the good thing is that the young shall grow. Is it not? Yeah. So don't be like this, behaving like this. You not do it, you not be groaning. Praise God. Someone in this church had a funeral for their father. I'm telling you a real life story. They spent... 200 million on the funeral. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And I know the person not lied to me. 200 million. The funeral had at least about 15,000 people that attended. 15 or 20,000 people that attended. <laughs> I said, it shows they are here. <laughs> Some of you, if your parents go, just call the family. 
and say, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, let the dead bury their dead. <laughs> Can we pray? Were you blessed today? Let's start up and pray. Let's start up and pray. <laughs>